Micro Center, a nerd and a geek's paradise. If you've never heard of them, Micro Center is a computer warehouse, basically, and they sell computer repair parts, they sell motherboards, they sell CPUs, they sell just about anything. So if you want to build a computer, you can go there. But one of the other things that they do sell is flash drives. Now, after years of spending my hard-earned money on Micro Center flash drives, I've come to the conclusion. They're slow, and they don't sell a one terabyte version. So I went looking around on Micro Center's website, and come to find out the biggest flash drive that they sell is a 512 gigabyte flash drive. And realistically, do you need anything bigger than 512? Well, it's not a question of do you need bigger than 512? It's a question, can we get to one terabyte? And can we make our own? So I have set out on a mission. I posted a video around about three or four months ago about the Micro Center flash drive and the fact that it was really slow and just not very good. We learned some things, but we also learned one thing. When I made that video, I wasn't expecting to get very many views, but it did over 100,000 views. And at the end of that video, I said if it gets 500 likes, I would make a one terabyte flash drive. And you guys didn't just do 500, you guys did 5,000. And then that got my wheels completely turning. Well, you see, here's the thing, you and I, right here. I didn't realize that the chips that I was going to be needing for this build were as expensive as they were. And of course, I'm a YouTuber on a budget, so I've got to figure things out. I'm no money. So I reached out to a company called Flexon. So Flexon makes parts for industrial equipment. And my goal was just to send them a cold email and see if they respond. And they didn't just respond. They responded the next day. They believed in my dream. And so we got on a Zoom call. During that Zoom call, I told them the vision. I was very upfront and I told them that this video is basically a meme. <laughs> yeah, what a way to sell it, right? But that's the thing. In 2025, we have network attached storage. We have computers with one, two, three, four terabytes in storage. Do we really need a one terabyte flash drive? At the end of the day, what do we use flash drives for? We literally use them to install an OS, maybe transfer one or two files. We use them for menial tasks that really don't matter for file storage or keeping things like long-term. We don't usually use them for that much. Or if you're going to use a flash drive, you're going to use something along the lines of like a portable SSD, which is considerably faster storage. But you see, there's a market that's missing, especially considering we've jumped from a 512 gig flash drive and gone directly to a portable SSD and we skip the one terabyte flash drive. But today we are going to make the one terabyte flash drive and not just any, but we're going to make the micro center one terabyte flash drive. So in this box is our flash drive, but not quite yet. It is still needing to be made. In this package, I have a USB dev board at the heart and soul of this project is this dev board. On this board, we have an NS1081, and we have the firmware to program this chip, so hopefully we shouldn't have any issues with this chip. Now, the cool thing about this board is we have a spot to solder in one, two EMMC drives. Now, for the flash chips. Flexon, you amazing people. Oh my gosh. There they are, two, count them, two, 512 gig EMMC storage. These puppies are the holy grail of EMMC. I think this is the highest storage you can get in an EMMC. And there they are, right here on my desk. So quite literally, the heart and soul of this project obviously is the dev board, but the huge heart and soul is Flexon believing in my dream and wanting to make this happen. So if you guys ever wanna order parts or anything from Flexon, show them some love. The link will be in the description. Okay, now here is the thing about these chips. Now when it comes to these chips, they already do come pre-balled with the solder balls to solder to these chips. So the only problem that I see happening with this build, a lot of times the solder uses a higher temperature to melt. And of course, if we're applying a high temperature to these very expensive chips, I don't think it's smart to apply that much heat. So I think what we should do is we should re-ball these chips with lower melting solder, which I have some nice mechanic paste right here. That's 183 and I think that this will be a whole lot better than whatever is on these chips. So it is a big task because obviously these chips are very expensive and the stakes are really high here. So I'm gonna just follow what I already know how to do and we're gonna try to reball these and we're gonna try to get them installed on this USB dev board. So let's get started. First we wanna do, prepare these pads to be soldered to, cause we're gonna reball the chips themselves. Apply the flux, got the soldering iron cranked up. Let's go ahead and add some leaded solder to the mix here first because we want to try to bring the melting temperature down as much as we can on these pads because of, you know, the pre balled solder. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to bring in the solder wick. This wick is made out of flux and copper. Basically, solder, it loves copper, so it is going to attract to this wick. I want to be on you. And that should be it. So I have some alcohol right here on a paper towel. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Try to make the board nice and fresh and ready to be soldered to. Let's flip the board over, do the same thing. 
our dev board is prepped and ready for our chips. Now let's get our chips ready for reballing. I have this awesome reballing platform by Tool, 2UUL, amazing. It's made out of silicone, it has a magnet in it, and so it holds the stencil in place when we go to reball. So let's do it. First things first, get the chip ready. <sighs> Here we go, add the flux. I wanna be so gentle with these chips, man. We're adding the leaded solder first to bring down that melting temperature, so when we go to clear the solder, it's gonna come up with the wick a lot easier, and we don't wanna damage any of the mask on the chip itself. It really shouldn't be that stressful, but dude, this is, the stakes are high, man. This is very, very expensive, and uh, I mean, it's, it's really, really delicate. All right, we prepped one chip. Time for chip number two. All right, add the flux. All right, flow the solder. It's not like I haven't done this before. I have. Like, I have to keep telling myself, Chase, it's gonna be all right. You got this, man. You gotta believe in yourself. You've done it before. You know what you're doing. You just need to believe. Clap your hands if you believe. And it's not like I haven't reballed EMMC chips like literally a hundred times. I know I can do this. Add the alcohol, clean the chip. All right, the chip is ready for reballing. So we'll grab one. We're gonna put it in the center of the platform. The chip doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be, you know, as clean as it can be. Grab our stencil. I'm gonna put our stencil down here. And we have to find where our balls are. What did he say? <laughs> You know what, let's clean the stencil first. I don't feel comfortable. For this type of stencil, I like to hit it with some hot air and then bang it on the side of my desk. Not to the point where you're gonna bend it, but uh, basically where the molten solder will fly out and hit you. No, I'm joking. If you don't feel comfortable, do not try this at home. But the reason I'm doing this is we wanna clear out all the holes perfectly. So if there's any residual solder or anything, it's gonna melt away and go usually right to the ground. Okay, I think that's it. Our stencil is ready, it's completely clear. We got our stencil lined up. Now the one thing I forgot to do is we have to prepare our solder paste. And you're probably wondering, what is solder paste? Solder paste is literally microscopic solder balls suspended in flux. Now what we want to do is try to make this reball process as seamless as possible. We wanna get rid of as much of that flux as we can so we can make the paste more of a paste that's dried out than rather like a, uh, I don't know, like a nasty paste. You'll see what I'm saying. So as you can see, the solder paste looks really shiny. We don't want it to be shiny, so we're gonna take a nice heaping glob, and we're going to put on this paper towel. We're just gonna spread it on there just like that. Now, to get rid of this flux, we're going to take it and we're going to fold it over just like that and push down. As you can see, some of the flux is poking through, and we'll pull it back just like that. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. Keep going until, until our solder paste looks like that. So now that we have our solder paste, we're gonna grab a dolkin. It's a shuriken. All right, we're gonna scrape up some of our solder paste here. Now you can see it's it's more like a paste and it's uh, it's a lot nicer, so we can spread it easier. Back to our stencil. So let's take the solder paste, just apply it just like that. And we're gonna try to hold our stencil in place while we just kind of do that. So all the solder goes into the stencil itself, just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and hold down the stencil on both sides and we're gonna hit it with the hot air. Keep the heat moving, keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Starting to form balls, there we go, there we go. Now, I don't know if all of those balls formed completely, so I'm going to hit this with flux, just like that. We're gonna try to spread this flux around, and we're gonna hit it a second time with the hot air. So let's go ahead and hold this stencil down in place, because what happens is, a lot of times, if, if you don't hold the stencil, it's gonna warp, and then your paste goes everywhere, and that is it right there, man. That's it. Well, let's uh, slowly remove this stencil and hopefully all of our balls formed and they did it looks like it what's up over here oh my goodness the stress dude the stress okay our first chip looks amazing let's move on to the second chip chip number dos yeah that was it they all formed perfect all right that chip is hot. When you want to reflow these, you, you want to do it quick. You want to get them formed and that's it. Okay, they've been reballed. We have uno and we have dos. The only problem I see right here is that ball is slightly larger than that one. I don't know how I feel about that. Oh no, okay, no, we're good, we're good. It's just, uh, just me uh, overthinking things. It'll work. Let's get the chips on the board. Board, add the flux. Now we want a thin layer of flux because we just want the chip to float right into place. Let's grab our first chip. Where are the markings for pin number one? They are up here. So let's get the chip in place. All right, I think that's money right there. Let's grab the hot air. We just want to flow this thing right into place. Want to be careful to not touch this chip. There it is. Oh, and it's flowing on its own. That's it. Gave it the little nudge. That's it. That's all we need. Now we let the chip cool and we will do the other side. Let's give it a little nudge. 
That's it, right there, we're done. Both chips are on. We just have to let the board cool and then we gotta program it. All right. Now I think it's only fitting. If we're going to make a micro center flash drive, it needs to be in a micro center housing, obviously. And I think the yellow looks really, really nice. Plus it's the one that I have on hand. I have a 32 gig, but it just, it just, it's kind of dark and it doesn't really look nice. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this flash drive out and I'm gonna give the housing to my wife and she is going to creatively make it a one terabyte version. All right, now naturally I would use a razor blade and the only one I have is this. So hopefully I don't uh, hurt myself here. What you're about to see may disturb you. Usually start from this side and cut down because at the end we're gonna super glue this thing back together. There we go, starting to cut through. Don't try this at home, try to pry it. Ah, just like that, yeah, because these usually come apart pretty easily once you, once you break the ends of it. And there we go, all right, we should be able to work this out now. All right, it's coming. Here's our 128 gig. Now I'm gonna give these to my wife and she is going to make this a one terabyte version. All right, we have the drive here. Let's plug it in and see if it works. Three, two, one. Okay, I heard something. Let's go to our tool here. Let's launch the MP tool. Select this one and it shows our one gig capacity. Dude, I wanna cry, man. This is so awesome. It's Okay, let's go ahead and program the firmware. All right, and we'll do card. You know what, we'll update the firmware and we'll partition it. And partition format, NTFS, and run. Okay, anything? Dude, it's freaking working, man. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, it says NTFS. Oh, there it is, it's freaking working. It did it, we did it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's open the drive and shoot. Let's copy over our Wii U NAND backup. It's got two gigs of space. So let's just try it and see how fast it goes. It's going good, it's going good. Now this is in the USB 2.0 port. So obviously this speed isn't super great. We should try to flash the fast firmware to it and see if it goes even faster. Oh, and we gotta put it in a USB 3.0 port. Okay, so I have the fast firmware. So let's get this tool to open. And I have the flash drive hooked up to a USB 3.0 port because we know that the original Micro Center flash drives are USB 3.0, but they are not fast. And that's kind of part of the reason why we're creating the one terabyte drive. So let's see if this works. This is a two gig folder. So let's just move two gigs and see how fast it goes. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude. This thing is screaming. <laughs> Screaming, dude. Okay, so we obviously see a little bit of slowdown here towards the end, which is, that's fine. That is totally fine. And then this one is 7.16 gigs. It's full of uh, DS ROMs. Let's go ahead and copy that right after it. Boom, freaking just screaming through it. Seven gigs of data in 60 seconds. And of course, like we see, it just drops off towards the end, which is totally normal. I, I think we see this normally with flash drives anyways. Dude, this is absolutely crazy, man. All right, cool. Now, let's safely eject the disc. Ooh, these chips are hot, man. They are hot. <laughs> That's amazing. And also, for the people that say that this is fake and I'm using something else, I have a USB drive here. I wanna show this at the exact same time on my computer as we connect it. You can see the light. You can see the flex on, and you can see right there, one terabyte right there, and let's eject it. And we should see it's doing things, ready to eject, done. One terabyte flash drive. Now let's put this in the new housing. All right, so thank you, sweetheart. You got rid of that, and we added one terabyte. Let's go ahead and put the flash drive in the housing. There we go. Now we'll add some super glue just around the perimeter. So when we go to seal this thing up, it's gonna be 100% good to go. All right, and thanks, Flexon. Now let's close up the drive, kind of squeeze it together. Hopefully this will just come on and try reopen it. Oh, wait a minute. I know why it doesn't want to seal. Because we have a little bit of excess here. There we go, and... There we go. So I think it goes just like that. We'll add a little bit more super glue. So once this thing is sealed up, it's sealed forever. There we go. Seal up real, real nice. Now we just wait for this thing to dry. We did it. We made a one terabyte micro center flash drive. And at the heart of this video, I need to thank Flexon. Thank you so much for believing in my dream 
and making my dream happen. You guys are amazing. So is this the fastest flash drive in the world? And I'm not talking about SSD, I'm talking about flash drive. Is this the fastest flash drive in the world? I don't know, it might be. 